Hawkins. That was stupid. Got more than 23,000 dollars. I'm on a flight every time that I walk in. Come a flash, a couple be recording. Throwing a beat, I'm a rap till morning. Casting a booking, fin a cutie, she morning. Green G's, not it is when I walk in. Defense, not it is when I walk in. Squad walking, looking at my jambazi. Mara heel, took a deal na heel kazi. Try me, say hi to Mari Sassi. Was eight when I stopped living home with mommy. Lost daddy, tango trap, found me early. Was grown when I was supposed to be hella childish. Adolescence, nearly quite a sad bitch. Then he had dado, lunch down in Namdishi. Now whip, come pishy, flow tight. She be, gain cake. See she be, streets like. Feed me, ayy. They can't get enough of what I'm spitting. This the walkings, real ones come and visit. So much to say, like, not enough day. I'ma say it anyway. I'ma say it anyway. I'ma say it anyway. For Kile, for Kile. Tryna put me in the ground. No sound, no sound. But the kid's been found. And I'm proud. Look at me now. I'm on the clouds. I'm on the ground. I'm on the ground, no. At the same damn time. And I still do rhyme, but I want others to shine. You feel me? Do you feel me? <laughs> okay. One thing I got to say uh-huh. is uh, this rap thing is not uh-huh. a game. I mean, game, niggas no. is really getting paid. Like, hey, big boss. watch how big you boss. play. Like, watch out for fakes. Like, Face. watch out for fakes. Like, snakes. Stay in your lane. In like, your lane, like, get you a bike. Like, Suzuki. I told you I got so much to say I don't know what to start with today Yeah I might need some Mary Jane Mary Jane come on I might need some anyway anyway I might need just need my brain need my brain I said I might just need my brain my brain cuz I fuck up but anyway but anyway anyway I'm human AF AF and guess what I do stay one thing in all just one breath one breath until there's nothing left until I'm so good they cannot Check, they cannot figure my steps. My steps. There's no SMS. No SMS. There's no fucking text. There's no fucking text. They can't fit all these characters. All these people, I'm a Gemini. You just know this though. Too many personalities. They cannot handle me. They cannot handle we. This is new Nairobi. Mmm. I didn't graduate though. <laughs> yeah. This is The Walkins, season 1, episode 10, season 1 finale, to your trip I just walked in. How are you feeling, bro? Blessed, brother. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. Yes, sir. Karim Busana Walkins. Now, on something that occurred quite recently, there's a video going around of Tony and Gang assaulting Barack Jacuzzi. Have you seen it? I have, I've witnessed this. Oh, I've right. witnessed it, I've seen it, <laughs> I saw it. Alright, um, what's, what's, your, what's your take on that? My take is, listen man, you guys are just getting started. Um, take it easy, your fan base is just catching up, you know. Um, I think, I think it's really, um, I think it's too, it's immature, it's too soon for that. Um, I think both these homies are putting in work right now and people are trying to catch their vibe, trying to understand their brand. So people pulling up for beef, like for knuckles or whatever, over nothing, like over no money, over no territory, over no... That's all that matters, because if you guys are fighting over girls, you're even more stupid. So, that's in my opinion, I think um, it's too early for any of that stuff. Yeah. 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 Um, where is Teo born and raised? Teo was born and raised in Aga Khan, well born in Aga Khan, Nairobi, uh, raised in South B. Then ever since that um, I moved to Kilaleshwa and I've lived in Kilaleshwa ever since then. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Kile boy. I see you working all day, every day. All day, even at night. <laughs> I, I, I love that. Um, what, what's your favorite 
and what's the best and worst thing about living in Nairobi? The best thing about living in Nairobi is the options, the variety. Um, Nairobi is a bit of a, it's like a prostitute. You know? we, we opened up ever since uh, independence. It's like we kind of just let anybody who's got uh, business ideas, anybody who's got a bit of cash, come in here and have their way. Um, but it's 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 been beneficial for us as citizens of Nairobi um, because the fact that we get a variety of different things that you can't find in other um, African or even East African countries. So. The worst thing about Nairobi, I would say, is I'm gonna just say the traffic for right now because I think everybody experiences that. Um, I just, yeah, that's not too deep of a thing to say. I think the traffic in itself is bad. So yeah, man, that's what I think. You don't, you don't struggle in traffic. I don't struggle in traffic anymore, <laughs> but I used to, and in fact, it's through that struggle that I was like, no, 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 something has to change. And so. Yeah, um, unfortunately, yeah, I was like, I, do, I can't do this no more. Yeah. Um, you've been on an incredible musical journey, first off with Kamolo, you know, BT Awards nomination, Channel Low, MTV, Europe Music Awards, Mobiles, BAFTAs. Um, how did it all come together with CM? It all came together with CM, no, through, through the streets, and I don't mean the streets in the same way that niggas mean the streets today. I mean in the sense that like we were just out there trying to have a good time, trying to vibe with girls, um, and Shaba and I were always dudes that were interested in uh, rap and in yeah, hip hop. Um, so I would always be in the parking lot rapping, trying to find out who's as talented or not talented, who's who's just as good, who's as sharp with their skills. Um, and Sharp was doing the exact same thing, and it was only a matter of time before we like came, you know, head to head. Um, and of course, Mikey Tony. Anybody who's uh, grown up in Nairobi knows that Mikey Tony is like a hustler. That's been hustler number one. Shout out so, to Tony. Yeah, shout out to Tony CEO. Man. Okay, so Tony just kind of spotted that and him being um, call him, uh, somebody with a, a great eye for talent. Um, he was like trying to now put some structure around what we were doing because um, he was like this this should be something instead of just like we meet up, we turn up, we run, we go home. Yeah, so shout out to Mickey for that. Um, I don't know what you was this. Um, can you tell us some of the ups and downs of, of the soldier? From uh, so the year was 2011, around 2011. It could have been a bit. It could have been earlier than that, but 2011 I think is a good starting point. Um, and the ups and downs of the journey. I was gonna ask you, mean from 2011 until now? Yeah, from 2011 until now with with Kamola. With Kamola. Yeah. I think the ups and okay. I'm gonna start with the downs. Um, I'll just be like, the thing about getting uh, famous, things happening so fast, is that there's so many new people that just show up all of a sudden. So there's all these new faces, people you've never seen, all of a sudden just being like, yo, you guy, my guy. So that sometimes can confuse uh, the hustle, you know, and just people in general. So. I think just dealing with the different personalities, the characters, the legacy, the legacy out here, bro. That was challenging. That was one of the challenges. But the ups, of course, in the same kind of sphere, was meeting a lot of people that um, are also on their grind, are also doing their thing, are inspiring um, change, you know, in whatever industries or pockets of the world they're from, um, and just trying to, you know, and, and, and being like, wow, if you're able to do what you're doing, then that's really inspiring me as well to kind of get on my ship. So that was cool, meeting people who are doing their thing and then aspiring to that and then rising to the same kind of level. That was dope. Um, now, after CM, those Cosmic Homies, how did that come about as well? Cosmic Homies, CH, CH. Um, Cosmic Homies came about when I met a lady called Marushka. Well, I met her online. Yeah. Kind of kind of met her online. She had been at family barbecues before. Right. I met her um, and her and, I, her and I just started vibing because we had similar interests. At that point, this is like so post Kamula. I, I started exploring like the universe and 
extraterrestrials and all that kind of shit. I was like, what other shit besides bling and cars and yeah. is out there? Yeah. So she's a lady. She's from Los Angeles, you know, and LA. These guys are out there. Um, but, so um, we just kind of had a lot to talk about. Um, so her and I linked up in my studio, and we just started talking burning incense, uh, reading books and shit like that. And I'm like, yo, there's somebody you should really meet. Um, and this is Karen. I'm um, like, I think she'd really appreciate the conversations, the vibes. And of course you, and this means Marushka, um, you being a lady as well, I think it would be something empowering for her. For sure. Yeah. So that's how the three of us got together. And then Kiwango had always been coming to the studio yes. with Timmy Tim, with um, 28. Um, a bunch of guys, a bunch of guys have really been growing up in my studio, <laughs> but that's a story for another day. Um, but Kiwango had been coming through and he was more quiet, you know, he's more meditative, he's, you know, and he can smoke a whole lot as well. And I was like, yeah, this kid, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, with him, I was just, he just kind of hung around and everyone liked his vibes. So, um, the, the four of us would just kind of sit in my studio, read, talk, smoke laugh and um, yeah it wasn't anything serious it was just like I hadn't had conversations with people about stuff like that you know, yeah that at all so that just we just clicked and uh, before we knew it there were more and more nights that were just hanging yeah. yeah so it was only a matter of time before someone was like let's record some shit let's record some shit yeah so yeah that's that's very organic I mean that's music culture like that oh that's the word right there right. yeah uh, Tara, now, what sparked your interest in music? Uh, I read somewhere that um, your grandfather was a musician. Uh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if your father too was a musician. The DJ. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, what are the influences uh, out there that sparked your interest in music? I mean, music, right? Music for me. So I was in a very white boy school. Okay, I was in Kenton College. Shout out to Kenton College. That's as white as it gets. <laughs> yeah, she has seen, she has seen my uh, music teacher. Well, that's a story for another day. Um, but um, I noticed that at like school discos. First of all, my music teacher loved me, so he would always like try to get me involved in orchestra and stuff like that. Perform well. Yeah, yeah, I think he's just like this is a this is a cool kid. There's something about this kid um, that I know he's not. He's not dumb, like he's switched on, but he just hasn't found his thing yet over here. So he kind of took me in, I joined orchestra and a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Being in orchestra, I was like, whoa, and then we you know, would always go up for like orchestra weekends at St. Andrew's, Turi, yeah, right. different places. I got there, bro, and I, the finest chicks were in orchestra. Played a period of time between ages um, kind of 11 or 12 to like 15 or 14, around then. Um, that interest in music at the first time, so that's during the weekdays, during the school, or you go for trips on the weekend. But if you're not going for trips, then you're at home. And at this point in time, I was big on watching TV, DSTV. Shout out to Monkey Choice, DSTV. You don't pay me to say that, but I'm just big up yourself. So I was always on channel low, TV, all that kind of stuff, playing music real loud. And my parents didn't mind me playing music real loud because my dad would also play music real loud. So my dad, first of all, um, would be the guy who hosted the parties, like for um, other family members, his friends. Uh, for sure. This dude, yeah, man. Yeah, like, so we always had a lit bar in the house, mm -hmm. playing lots of amazing music. So I always grew up kind of looking at that, like this is the cool thing. You know, this is just the cool thing. It was more of a um, confirmation of what I already felt coming up from prep school, from my first ex um, from being exposed to like what music does to others, right? Um, so with my pops and stuff, I saw how cool he was. He always had a bunch of CDs in his car. He had the best music. He would make me um, mix CDs um, and write down all the names and stuff. Because when I went for parties, um, I would be the guy who brought the music. It's my dad's music, but it's, like it was music of my time, you know. So he was really like about that and I noticed how people just react like whoa because that time I'd be, people called me Matthew I wasn't called Teo, Teo yet at all yo Matthew like this music is amazing these are like hot girls bro these are like Italianos and stuff like that I don't know where these girls I'm going to be but like it was just 
it was really cool for me at that point in time and I kind of just felt like, okay, there's something in this music thing. And of course, like I said, because of watching um, music videos, a bunch of music videos, I just began to understand how powerful music is. And I was like, this is something I just want to get more and more involved in. But of course, since I was in such a white school, people are not encouraged to really take music that seriously unless you're playing clarinet or some shit. Yeah, man, so that, that was kind of like the genesis. Those were when the seeds were planted, like this is something that I like, the feeling of it. Yeah, man. Um, how did that transition into rapping? Boom. One word, bro, high school. High school is just the point in time when you're out there, you're more out there. So after Kenton, I went to Hillcrest. Um, and Hillcrest is just uh, it's a lot freer. It's a very liberal school. Um, and now, like, even finer girls now. Um, like, finer girls. And in the, in the corridors and stuff, um, um, they would always be always banging on the lockers trying to make beats because at that time niggas is competing for like who's gonna get the most attention, who's gonna get so you got some homies who are in gym, you got some homies who are just chops, um, and so there were us guys who were who were just more in the corridors, like kind of the bad boys. The first homies to kind of be like rocking Tims with our uni with our uniform. We had earrings, we thought we were the shit. In, bruh. Yeah. So <laughs> banging in the corridor and stuff and then people started rapping and I just started catching on. I'm like, oh shit. You know, because I already had a, a good sense of rhythm and a good taste of music. For sure. And I kinda thought I knew what was hot and what was not, musically speaking. Mm -hmm. So I was just I would listen to some of these guys in year thirteen and stuff rapping and I was just like, ah oh, okay yeah this is cool, this is cool but this guy, I mean, because rapping is just talking fast to the beat. I'm like, I can out talk this nigga. I can out talk this guy. Um, so, one of the guys in the um, year, I think he was in year 12 at that time, he's called Noah. Um, his, his rap name is GBO. Right, Golden Boy or Domo. GBO, shout out to you, bro. These homies, they started a rap club, right? Because you have to have clubs in school. They started a rap club. Um, and all of us signed up because we were like, man, nobody's trying to go for the cool, cool mom club. Fucking guys were doing all kinds of funny stuff. But rap club popped up, guys were like, that's our shit right there. So we signed up, we pulled up, we went rap club, and these guys were now trying to take us through like rap um, theory, you know, like trying to get us to understand it. But all we really wanted to do was just rap, rap against each other, insult each other. Because again, this is high school, it's all about like popularity. So you had all this shit, you kept bottling. These guys have been, some homies have been bullying you for a long time. They won't let you sit where you want to sit in the bus and stuff like that. So rap club just lets you go loose. And then rap club, bro, it's like from first session, I was kind of quiet. But from the second session, once I started like kind of feeling out, okay, this guy's good, this guy's good. Um, I just, I, I kind of went for it. And I went straight for Noah. You know, I went straight for this homie. And because freestyle rap, whatever, it's about like what people think. It's about their response. Sometimes you, you could have weak bars, but if people are like, man, this guy brought it, then you won. And I won a couple of times. Enough times, actually. Um, until the year 13, when I was in year 9, they gave me respect, you know, so now I could hang out with them, I could talk to their girls, I could sit in their area, whatever it was, and I'm like, bruh, I am not going back, I am not going back, I'm not going back, I'm like, I like this, I really like this, and so that became, that became um, kind of like my intro into this whole um, life in that way. Um, you also produce as well. Yeah. You also a DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, after rapping, which came first, producing or the DJ? Uh, the DJ. The DJ. DJ. Yeah. But, um, out of the rapping, DJ, and producing, do you have a favorite? Uh, I think it's seasonal. It's seasonal. I think rap is not forever gonna be in my heart in that kind of way, but I have this love-hate relationship with rap culture. Generally, you know, I think rap is cool because um, it, 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 it's a way of showing, displaying your intellect. And this is why I, I low-key have a problem with mumble rap, not because I don't appreciate the talent or the hard work, but it's like I always thought rap was about like I'm gonna use my knowledge and I'm gonna try to put things together in a way that's like a good presentation of music and of uh, yeah of intellect, I guess. So. My favorite, I would say, 
at the moment I, it's hard it's hard it's hard for me to pick one because I'm always switching at any one time yeah so. Can you ever see the day made men make other men? We managed to juggle all three in the papers. Um, fortunately for me, I early on as well. I I asked my mom early on. Uh, I was like, I need to get studio equipment. You know, I was like being tied down to a studio or to somebody. See, I understood the importance of being independent early on. You know, because I I just peep game. I peep people's game. Was this after CM and Sotara? It's during that point in time. Right, right, right. It's during that point in time when I just started feeling some vibes and I'm like, yo, the worst thing that would happen out of this is if I can't make music anymore. Like if I have to come here and like suck dick to be able to fucking record, you know what I mean? I'm like, that would suck, so I'm like, look, man, whatever's going to need to happen, it's about grades, whatever, I'll do it because I need to be able to get my own equipment so that I have that independence. Let me just have that shit at the house so that no matter what happens, I have something to start from. So because of that, um, having that equipment, I've been able to experiment. I can, I can mess around and stuff. Um, so with rapping, I can, I can spit one verse like 20 times, come back, change it up again with DJ, I can record mixes as many times as I want with production, I can go and it's all about um, experimenting. Like production takes so much studying, um, so it's, it's, it's been just amazing to have that space and that's allowed me to grow um, three ways like that. Just by being able to experiment and research and experiment and try things that I get feedback. So, Get your own shit. It's not that expensive nowadays as well. Like, to be real, it's, it's not that expensive. So, invest in yourself um, because you find that when someone invests in you, it's usually a strings attached. You know, um, when you just want to be free, it's just want to be free. What happened to Triple Tuesdays? Ah. So Trip of Tuesdays came up at the time when again, bro, these babes in Hillcrest were just confusing a young nigga. <laughs> confusing a young yeah. nigga. It's okay though, ladies. Um, so Trip <laughs> Trippy Tuesdays, I'll come back home after school and I'll just be in my room and I had a bunch of instrumentals and I'm like, I, I wanna say some shit. So I'll just set it up on my laptop, I'll have my the laptop camera and my laptop was new and shit. I I got a MacBook really early and I didn't know what to do with it. Like my auntie got it because I got good grades, she got it for me. Um, but I didn't know what to do with it, so but I knew how to use the photo booth. Yeah, I was like, fuck it, I know how to use photo booth. <laughs> Play the beat on iTunes and then photo booth, and I'll just do my thing. And I'll share it on Facebook because Facebook was kind of newish. Um, and people were just responding, so I'm like, oh damn. So I'm like, okay. T T. I've always kind of been a. I wouldn't say I'm a marketing guy. Now I am more of a marketing guy, but back then I'd always be trying to like come up with names. You know, when Kamula came up with that name. Um, to find yeah. just a bunch of things which I'm sure we'll talk about. But like, so Trippy Tuesdays, like, oh man, it means Trippy Tuesdays. I can do this thing every Tuesday. Guys love it. And then I just noticed that whenever I go to go out and stuff, I'll meet more people who are like, yo, I see you, bro. I see you with the bars and everything. So I'm like, oh, this is dope. This is dope. So that kind of like, um, that uh, acknowledgement is what um, kept that going. I stopped doing it because of the fact that time was time consuming. And then now I was actually like in the studio recording the raps and everything like proper proper. So I was like, oh okay, cool. I, I'm I'm not just gonna like keep on doing it this way. Now I can do it professionally. So yeah, that's why I just put a post to it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the ever last boxing challenge. I used to freestyle in MKA because that's what kind of kept me sane. You see, I got removed from my culture. Right, I've been in all these IG schools with all these people, and then my parents moved me to Nyeri. Mm? Like, I'm sure not that. All the way to Nyeri. So, when I got there, I meet, I just knew a bunch of people didn't get me. You know, they was like, who the fuck is this guy? Who does he think he is? With his British accent, talking to our women. The people are so proud about your women, man. These are not even your women, though. What's wrong with these niggas? But, with, with Everlast and freestyling in, in the dorms and stuff, it was just a matter of getting to know the guys. Um, everybody's super talented in their own way, first of all, I want to point it out. 
So it's just kind of letting people know this is what I do, and I really believe in myself, and I don't care what you think about me. So here we go. So if, yeah, so I don't remember exactly about Everlast, but I remember freestyling a lot with people, um, being in the music room a lot, and just bringing it anytime um, I was given a chance. Because, um, I think, yeah, because, because people then, there was, there was a lot of hate, man, low-key hate, you know, and I was, I was just like, all right, I'm going to turn that into something, and that's the story of me kind of freestyling. Yeah, um, on, a, on a more serious note, mm. Uh, this year we've been using a lot of artists, even friends, yeah. to drug-related problems, to mental health. And I think in Africa we don't talk about it as much as we should. Um, so what do you think we can do as the youth? And uh, for the people watching, for the people who've been on the show, artists, people who have a platform, um, what can they do to raise awareness about this problem that we have? Okay, creating awareness through, you can create awareness about this through A, through your art, through you as just a person, through your living. I mean, you and yourself, you're, you, you're a brand, you and yourself are an example of like, you're, you are life, you know, so you can create awareness by just um, succeeding. Succeed. I think people need more success stories of people who like, I stuck to this path and did it, you know. But also, mind you, at the same time, it's like, kids, man, do the drugs, don't let the drugs do you. I think people just like get a bit carried away with it. And I say that because I know I've taken copious amounts of drugs in the sense of like, just don't think that that, um, that world that you get into when you're high um, is real. Don't fall for that. That's what happens when you cross over and you find out that someone's passed away or something. It's because life in itself is hard, that's true, and people take drugs to escape that reality. But it gets to a point where you get so cozy in there, you know, you're like, oh, you know, you get so cozy and then, you know, you're gone. Like, like, you know. So when I say kids do the drugs, don't, yeah, don't let the drugs do you. I'm not encouraging anybody to do drugs. It's just the fact that it's like they are out there, more or less, you're going to be exposed to them. But it's just to remember that, like, you're here in this reality, in this dimension uh, for a reason. And there's certain things that your body can handle and can't handle. So be smart about your shit. I know people want to expand their mind as well. It's a normal thing, particularly if you're transitioning from a young adult into a whatever, you know. That's normal. But it's just to to know that like there's so much more to life, you know. And I said, I acknowledge, yes, life is hard, but there's so much more if you just give yourself the chance um, to live it. Uh, and for, for us young people, man, it's like, the way in which we do drugs is so whack as well. Like, I know people who are 40 who do drugs who have a great time. Why? Because these guys have houses, they have cars. Their shit is, you know, it's put together. But for youngsters, it's like we're out there, we're on the streets, you don't even have money to go home, you're not eating, you know, all that kind of shit. So, what do you expect? You know, you can't take ego, your ego into drugs. And that's something that I learned as well when I did DMT. But we can talk about that later. But you can't take your ego to drugs because you just get you get slapped, you know. It's slapped. Yeah, for real. So pump your brakes, man. I'm not I don't advocate for complete abstinence. I mean if you're somebody who just doesn't work for you, that's cool. You know, but I, I'm just saying uh, life, think long term. Think long term. Um, and that's what as well has kept me alive, you know, and kept me as a functioning member of society. Despite the fact that I've also been out here, like I've been turning up, I've been trapping, I've been doing all this shit as well. But I can still sit in a boardroom and do what needs to be done because I've always had that kind of like bigger picture in mind, yeah. That's my two cents on that. So for a lot of the people who lost their lives to drugs, um, I would just say that many of them we don't understand maybe deeper what was happening, what they were going through. <clears throat> but the only thing I can say is it's when you lose hope in this reality or you, you feel like you can't understand or you feel like there's nothing left for you here, then you overdo it. Um, and that's what happens. Yeah. So that's really important guys. I hope you've had what you said. Hey, um, yeah. What's the most painstaking challenge you endured during your career? So a fantastic question there. The most painstaking. 
I think I think it was witnessing my homie like your really close friend, somebody you've grown up with and you know very well. Um, and then all of a sudden that same person is not the same person. And you know, okay, so what I mean is like, sure niggas change, you're not expected to stay the same, that's why we all do what we do because you want to grow and evolve. But like, when your homie is going through all the stuff and it affects his mental health to a point that like, nobody's home, you know, like, it's not the same person at all. That was always painful. Uh, the most painful thing I think I've had to experience being a part of uh, this industry and all that shit was just kind of like, losing someone who, not losing, but losing that connection with someone who you literally stepped into this arena with together. So that was, that was for me, it's like it was probably the most painful thing. What was the reason um, He was just going through a lot of uh, personal family, you know, stuff. Um, yeah, and at, at that point in time, he probably thought, I have nobody to to talk to these niggas won't understand because we're, so, we're all supposed to be cool we're all supposed to be good um but that's not true like we're all human you know so even tupac fuck human as hell you know I, and i only use tupac as an example because he would be outwardly like gangster gangster g up but we also knew that tupac was somebody who was very um in touch with his shit so yeah, uh, that was uh, yeah that was what the most painful thing about it was. Now for what should any aspiring artist like that keep in mind before diving into the music industry? Aspiring artists, you need to figure out who the hell you are first. Number one, figure out who the hell you are, and what I mean by that is spend enough time with yourself. You know. Um, and that's what people, that's what young people don't do enough of. You know? We don't spend enough time by ourselves because it's always gang gang. It's always gang gang, gang gang. Like I was with my homies most of the time, actually all the time, you know. So for aspiring artists, I think it's like you become, there's this group mentality. Firstly, there's a group mentality, and then like you've got your people that you look up to. And you feel like, okay, this guy has done this like this, and this person has done this like this, so I'm just going to copy that. You know, and that's a big mistake because when it comes to art, it's about your authenticity. And that's what people are buying into, that's what they want to see, that's what they want to hear. So, to aspiring artists, it's like, don't be ashamed of who you are. You know, some people will be like, I don't know if, if they're going to vibe with me the way I am, you guys, you know, blah, blah, blah. But literally, that's what people. Um, capitalize on. I saw that in America. Like I met really cool nerds. I met people who you wouldn't even expect to do the shit that they do, and they do it well. So yeah, that would be my advice to aspiring artists over here. It's just like discover who you are and whatever you do. Maybe you're somebody who grew up in Fika or something, and you still, or you live even deeper in Chaz or something, and you think, yo, what's cool about? I've got two pairs of jeans, but I have these kicks, and I just I don't feel like my story is cool enough or is appealing enough to masses. But that's literally the thing that people want. That's what we need. Yeah, we need that authenticity, that originality um, in the world. Yeah. Um, uh, what's the you have to behind the scenes, music related or other? Behind the scenes, man, tell you about the business. I mean, that in the sense of I'm, I'm, I'm now moving into a space where I, um, I consult and I, I coach people, I mentor people um, on one side and then I'm literally, I meet a lot of people in high levels of management and stuff like that because I had exposure to them during the Kamula high season. I got to meet all these, all, all these motherfuckers. You know, motherfucker boss, just say it. Just say it. it it's it's um, my main thing right now is about setting up um, setting up like I, I don't want to call it an agency but a community um, where people know that there's somebody who is speaking from a space of honesty and experience and like a, a big homie I never had a big homie when I was coming into this game just a bunch of old niggas lying trying to trying to be around me and my homies because the shorties wanted to be around us you know people who use you and stuff like that there's a lot of users in this industry 
So I, I felt like it's important right now to, at the point I'm in in my career yeah. to be a big homie to a lot, a lot of people and just kind of um, give them my opinion on, on stuff, my advice rather. Uh, and so now I'm trying to formalize that so that it's something that can as well, like I can stay afloat from doing that because it's, I, I'm passionate about it. I want to be able to help, but just like anybody else, we gotta live, right? I mean, I've gotta, I've gotta live as well. So just trying to understand how I can put structure around that, yeah. Structure around being real and being able to help as many people as possible, but also um, live, a, live a decent life, yeah. Uh, that's still in the works, right? That's still in the works right now. Actually, that's currently what I'm doing right now, like literally having meetings every day trying to figure out how to sort this out and what the best way um, is to go about it um, and make it uh, a business. Yeah. Uh, I think we're definitely looking forward to that. Okay. So, so we can drop a lot of them. Uh, how about you? Uh, is anything Music wise, it's a bunch of stuff. Like I said, you see, I'm a, I'm a very dangerous man in this industry because I'm fucking free and they don't want you to be free in this industry. You see, so I'm a very dangerous man. In fact, I have few friends in this industry, not even friends, acquaintances. And I don't give a shit because of the fact that it's like, like I mentioned earlier on that I peep game. I, I see things, you see, I'm an empire, so you don't have to say what I know you can't say, but I can just feel it. I can feel it and for the people who are coming into this game you're gonna meet so many people who have all kinds of like yo sit shotgun in my Mercedes da 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 you can sleep in my house here's a bottle of, you know all that kind of stuff but nah, I, I, I just I saw that I saw that early on and I was just like nah you're doing drugs kids don't let the drugs do you <laughs> So what up to you music wise? What are you up to in music wise? The reason I'm a dangerous man is because I can wake up in the morning and today I want to make a beat. I'll make the beat, I'll put it out, or I can make a mix so I can just start jump on tracks. So I don't have any particular strategy when it comes to music. I go with what feels right, which is what I should have done from the beginning. But it's not it's not too late, you know, to, for that to be the way I go about my shit. So yeah, musically speaking, it's like homies will hit me up. Who I resonate with, I'm like, okay, this would be a dope. Yeah, come over to the crib. Let's record some shit. Let's put it out. Um, and besides that, just growing as much as I can in um, in the craft, like mastering my craft. You know, because you master your craft. You see, people have to understand as well that it's like there's so much money. Okay, in anything, in anything you do, there's a lot. There's potential for you to make lots of cash, but it all it all depends on how much you've invested in yourself. So again, I, I, I got exposed, I met a bunch of people, particularly in the States, who had invested into their shit so much. So when they ask for $10,000, $20,000, plus, plus, plus for shows and stuff, they're justified to do that because when you go there and you watch them do their thing, you're like, oh yeah, this guy is a professional, you know, this is a pro. So a lot of niggas get into this game and it's because they didn't want to be in school or something. Like they thought this is easier, this is an easier round. Let me just rap or something else, put on or some shit like that. But you need to understand that this is it's an industry, it's a business just like anything else. And the best people get the biggest bucks. Period. And I think everybody wants to live the best life, right? Yeah, so that's that's really that's what I would say. I would say just like the best man. Invest. Maybe trauma I'm a boy. Ooh, trauma all day. From an old day, I can feel it. It's pretty good. Ah, lazima, lazima. Android demo of us, iOS. You already see this, bro. Android, Android things. Android things. I was on, I was on OS, but you know what? OS is boring, in the sense of like, you see, Android is customizable. So for for artists, or for me, let me speak for myself. Um, sometimes you wanna switch your shit up, you know. I can change my icons, I can change my themes. There's a lot of things that Android have opened up to me that have like made me feel like this is just a much more flexible platform than the OS. But I use um, Mac products for my work. Yeah, but yeah, obviously, but I, I like Android very much. Yeah. Chayama Zero, green tea. Green tea.
Standard, standard green tea, no sugar, man. It's just honey, 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 honey. honey. And that's how I've kept it. Yeah, like basically. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Sturungi, I would just say I'm a Sturungi. Sturungi is also on the, it's also there, it's also on the list. But green tea is just better, better. Yeah. I'm on the hill with the MC Walking around the scene This is episode 10 Tell you keep on drop some gems uh. Kill us under we tune in For real we tune in Are you tripping in the building? Building yeah. What you say? Tripping in the building I ain't got children I got niggas Now they like pilgrims hey. And I'm chilling Chillin'. And we killing No blood spilling hey. And I'm feeling like a milli hey. And I still do it for my city Go Jew, my nigga, we not chinny hey. I say it, my nigga, it's not fit uh, Sometimes we fuck up, it's true It's freestyle, my nigga, it's all green, never blue hey. Sometimes we wanna do things that they do But it's better, my nigga, to just do you You feel me, you dig, no shovel <laughs> No no word could even rhyme with that It doesn't really matter cause I keep it on track I keep it all facts and this is real rap My nigga say this is real black And tell me can they really do that? Nah, nah that's why we overlap Every time I might as well take a nap I might grab my sack <laughs> Cause the kids after that that come through It's all cool, it's all smooth It's Matthew and Wham's nigga Track still getting bigger. I might as well be Chigger. You know that? She saw me in the truck, and now I'm on the bike like I like living my life. No hype, and I didn't chop rice, my nigga. It's just like we did it with no stripes. Today it's all golf wang, all future. You should check him out, uh huh, or ask Luther. My nigga, shout out to Keith Lay. 48, we do it at night or all day. Want the mic now? Does he want the mic now? I tell him my nigga he should be proud cause he's learning his shit and now you see him now. <laughs> I said that times three, it doesn't really matter cause we do this for free. Sometimes, oh we charge. Like nigga everybody, everybody all the board on the board. They wanna know the name but the nigga like a god. To all these other kids but he talking to the dogs. Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> True, 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 true. Use your head now, spoof, spoof, spoof. Kill a siku, my nigga. Mutaribu, mm -hmm. my nigga. This game that we work so hard to build. Fighting over nothing but bills. I ain't gonna name drop, no sir. But you know you a damn flop, yes sir. Before you even drop your album, you know it's nothing that we can give to our. Mm. I'm telling you, I'm human, for real. This is not written, it's real. Maybe I should pass it so I can chill, take a sip from the... This does nothing like a rhyme with that. That's just... <laughs> Trying to teach the world change, grab a mood ring It could be the new blink, who knew I know no when? when? Learn to trust and obey in your old friend They try to choke him, threw me in the ocean Now that I'm floating, trying to cop a boat man. So cut the ropes and telescopes will show which way We should flow now, cause it's time to go Regular man-made machine Welcome to the man-made machine You and I are listening to the man-made machine Yes! Man-made machine Man-made machine